Hello friends, many of you have been eagerly waiting for an update about my stingless beehive. Many of you have asked me a few questions which I will try to answer to the best of my ability so that you can decide if you would like to order a stingless beehive for your garden. Well, I am happy to inform you that I am the proud owner of 5 stingless beehives from Binu's farm. I got a few different designs from him so that I can observe and study each one and then compare them. My preference is based on the hive which is the easiest to open and film so that I can enjoy the bee activities and share them with you. All three designs you see in this picture are two layered. The beige wooden hive and the green PVC hive are double deckers. The brood chamber being at the bottom where the queen lives with the worker bees, the drones or the males, the eggs and the newly born infant bees. And the super chamber or the honey chamber which is on top where the bees store the extra honey. Because of the two layered design, one can easily harvest the honey without disturbing the bees. The green wooden hive has a side by side partition and is my favorite amongst all the hives. Initially for a month or so, I didn't notice too much difference inside the hives. Since the bees had some honey pots that Binu had put in for them, they went about their work as usual. After a few weeks, I saw that the bees in all the hives had used up the honey from within, and there were minor changes in the colony size. This was expected as the bees had changed their home from lush green Kerala to the concrete jungle of Mumbai. There was bound to be some adjustment as the bees no longer had access to the pollen and nectar they were used to, both in quality and quantity. I observed all five hives regularly from December onwards, filming the insides of each hive regularly. They had used up the stored honey and I did not see them store any fresh honey, which worried me a bit. However, there was enough activity going on in all the hives and I had spotted the queens in all the hives. So I observed and took notes patiently. By March, my growing season had ended as the sun had receded from my windows. However, the trees that are there all around my building started to flower profusely. By mid-March, the bees started to arrive with pollen-packed legs early in the morning and they started to store honey in the brood as well as the honey chambers. I believe they also collect some amount of pollen from the purple flowers that are on the boundary walls of my building. It is a huge relief to see them come back with pollen packed legs when there is nothing growing in my garden currently because of lack of sun. So March, April and May are peak season for the bees in my area and in Mumbai. It will be interesting to see if the bees use up all the reserves in the monsoons, during which pollen and nectar are limited and the bees do not venture out of the hives. So in window number 3, I have 3 beehives. You see 2 PVC beehives. One is grey, that was the first one that I got. The one next to it, the green one is the second one. And then I have a wooden one over here. Now the very first grey hive, the grey colour PVC hive, for some reason has not done well at all and the colony size is very very small whereas the one next to it is doing extremely well and I uh, showed you the footage of the bees uh, entering and exiting the hive early in the morning if there are like 20 bees waiting to enter the green hive there is just one in the same time period so I am going to open this hive now and let you have a look it's the colony size is smaller than when the beehive arrived 
and for the other hives the colonies have really uh, multiplied and they have also started storing honey in the honey chamber so let's have a look so I have removed the detachable portion of the hive and this part that I'm holding right now is the honey chamber once the uh, bees have stored the honey this is the part that we will be removing like this and the honey will be inside this section you can see that they have not done any work on top as yet now I will open the brood chamber for you the bees keep working and keep sealing it off with the propolis so that it's completely airtight and I see some very small insects hovering around now when I open this the attacker bees will all start to fly out they are called attacker but pretty docile and since the colony size is very small I am not really worried about it so I will just remove this gently and then zoom in so that you can have a look you can see the bees are flying out of the colony and this is the propolis the sealant you can see how small the colony size is and there is the queen at the base that's a good sign that the queen is still there queen is alive but for some reason this hive is just not picking up as it should and the other hives in comparison they have gone way ahead but since there are enough bees and the queen is still alive I'm still hopeful that it will take its time and recover hopefully now because the bees have enough pollen to get from the outside this is hive number two that I'm opening for you the green PVC hive you can see the colony size it is way bigger than the grey PVC one you can see the eggs you can see a lot of honey bags stored on the sides of the hive you can see a lot of propolis a lot of activity in this particular hive and here is the beige wooden hive the hive that was damaged in transit where there were hardly any bees and you'll be surprised to know that this is the hive that has recovered so well and it has the maximum amount of honey that is stored in the honey chamber that you can see on top lot of bee activity as well in the honey chamber hive number four and five arrived together and they are in the living room window just above the sunshine chili and my Indian green chili over here so one is green PVC and one is green wooden and I'll just remove the wooden hive and show you what's happening inside today is 11th of April 2017 so here is the green wooden hive and of all the hives I like this one the best one is it's wooden so the insulation is great and then you have a side by side partition now when this hive arrived it didn't have any honey in the honey chamber you can see here the bees have started storing honey in the honey bags and there are a lot of bees here in the corner they are probably trying to seal up all the gaps I don't want to remove this sheet that is there because then they will have to put in more work to seal it up again and this is the brood chamber you can see they have collected a lot of honey in the honey bags here all of this was not there in the beginning there was a small amount of honey at the base which they had used up and now because there is a lot of pollen available the activity in the hive and outside the hive has increased 
tremendously. It's pretty fascinating how they communicate. There's division of labor. Everyone is doing their thing. No fighting, no quarreling. Efficiency at its best. It's, I'm curious to understand how it is that they know what they are supposed to do. So there are the drones or the males and their job is just to mate with the queen and then there are the worker bees which are female <laughs> and I don't know why I'm not surprised at that and then there are the infants and the queen of course. I'm just loving the stingless beehives, totally fascinating for me. You can see here the honey that they started storing in the honey chamber which is parallel to it. So when you want to harvest honey from this particular hive, what you do is you will just lift up the honey, uh, the sheet from the left and remove the honey from here. What are the flowers that stingless bees like? Stingless bees love small flowers is my observation so far. Now Binu has sent cuttings of the honey tree to me and he sends the cuttings to everyone with their hive and once your cutting is successful it takes a year or so for the tree to start flowering. And in the meanwhile, one can grow plenty of basil and mustard. Stingless bees love basil flowers. One can grow different varieties of basil like sweet basil, lemon basil, Thai basil, clove basil. And the bees also absolutely love the mustard flowers. Any of the plants from the mustard family, so uh, rye uh, from the kitchen, uh, broccoli flowers and uh, arugula flowers all of those from the same family the bees just love it and then the chili flowers moringa flowers so these are some things that you can keep in mind to grow for the bees now here you can see the stingless bees collect pollen from these harlequin marigold flowers the pollen in this type of marigold is exposed and easy to access however since the bees are so tiny they can get into flowers that are big or small do we need to feed water to the bees in a separate bowl no stingless bees find their own water source from the tree saps and nectar and since these bees are so tiny leaving a bowl for them may cause them to drown it is medicinal when the flowers that the bees visit are medicinal Kerala is abundant with thousands of varieties of medicinal flowers and hence the honey from Binu's hives is medicinal. If you have medicinal flowers in your garden or rooftop, the honey will be medicinal or else it will be floral. The honey being medicinal does not have anything to do with the bee processing it. It has to do with the flowers from which it collects it, the pollen and nectar. If you are blessed with ample space on a terrace garden or an in-ground garden, you could research medicinal plants that do well in your climate and grow those for the bees. I surely would if I had the space. Even in my limited space, I plan my garden around only those plants that the bees will visit. I have grown borage, coneflower and sunflower for the bees as they are known to be bee magnets. But the stingless bees did not visit these flowers at all. It appears they have a choice of pollen and nectar. And from what is available, they go to the more abundant source. Each flower has different quantities of pollen and nectar and the bees choose the flowers they wish to visit. Local bees prefer local flowers is what I have understood from experimenting with various flowers in my garden. In Kerala, the trigona species of stingless bees is the most common. 
So these bees are probably a variety of the trigona species. A few of you would want to know if the beehive is okay after it arrives to your home after four to five days of travel. Uh, well, the you will have a few bees line up at the entrance of the hive and these are the guard bees and once they line up you know that the hive is all right even if uh, bees have died in transit the hive will recover in a few weeks another question that i've been asked is will my stingless bees starve if i harvest their honey now stingless bees store the honey they need in the brood chamber where the queen the eggs the infants and the worker bees are present and once they have extra they store it in the honey chamber so if you have a regular supply of pollen and nectar harvesting from the honey chamber will not starve the bees will i be harvesting honey from the hives I will not be harvesting honey from any of my hives for one year. I will see how much time the bees take to fill up the honey chamber. Whether they will use up this stored honey in the off season or in the monsoons. And I also need to see if they are com coming back with pollen throughout the year. Once I know the pattern in my windows, I will harvest the honey from next year. I do not wish to harvest their reserves till the colony is well established and has enough pollen and honey both in the brood and the honey chambers. A few of you wanted to know if it is safe to own the stingless beehives. Is it safe to hang the hive so close to the window or in our balcony? Well as you can see I have three beehives in my monkey window and two in the living room window and the bees have never come into my living room or bedroom. I have children and pets at home and there has been no issue whatsoever. When to shift a hive if one is unhappy with the original positioning or one realizes that there is sun falling on the hive. First figure out a better location by observing your garden or windows in the day. Once the sun has set, you can easily shift the beehive to another location as all the bees have returned to the hive before the sun sets. If you were to shift the hive in the daytime, the bees returning to the hive would not be able to find their hive and would keep hovering in the same spot. They know exactly which hive to return to. I have five hives and the bees return to their own hive because they know the exact position of the hive and they can also smell the propolis and sense of smell is probably very very strong they can identify their hive with ease another question i have been asked is can i have a stingless beehive if i don't have a garden or if i have a garden only six months of the year yes you can have a beehive if you have a garden within 100 to 200 meters of where you're going to be placing the beehive Stingless bees are very very tiny. They are about a third of the size of a house fly and can fly only 100 to 200 meters in search of pollen and nectar. Now the current footage that I am showing you about the bees returning with the pollen packed legs, they are collecting all of this pollen from the garden across. Uh, there are these trees around my building that are flowering profusely and I don't have anything in my garden currently except for a few basil plants with very few flowers so and that is white pollen that they collect from there so even though my garden is completely in the off season right now the bees are coming back with the pollen packed hind legs another question I was asked is whether other bees other varieties of bees will try and get into the stingless beehive. Uh, well, the stingless beehive entry is very small and the bees cover up the entrance with propolis and you can always see four or five 
bees that are guarding the entrance so as to prevent any invasion and all other bees are bigger in size than the stingless bees so they would not be able to get into the hive moreover each bee knows exactly where its home is due to the smell of the the scent of the propolis or the bees wax and they go back only to their hive i am amazed at how intelligent and efficient these bees are in december and january when we had slightly cooler nights the bees would emerge from the hive only around 8 am but now in april it is so hot in the day and the bees are out of the hives as soon as the sun is up around 6:30 am and they are busy foraging till around 11 am after which the activity reduces again i wish i could read their minds and understand how they communicate and work in complete harmony so here was the update on my stingless bee hives and i hope that i was able to answer everyone's questions and if you would like to order your very own stingless bee hive you can contact binu on his number which i will leave in the description box of the video until next time happy stingless bee keeping and happy gardening friends